that's very important for um, Geisha Alliance clubs to know is that according to our education code, which is like um, the constitution of California public schools. So, you know, the constitution gives us the rights and the rules for our state or our country. Well, our schools each have that, which is the education code in California. And within that education code, there are specific rights to Gay Straight Alliance clubs on campus, right? Like there's a right for a GSA to be created if any other non or extracurricular clubs are created. For instance, if you have a prom club, you have to allow for a GSA to be created, right? Um, and so for the GSAs who already exist, um, it's really important that you know that once your GSA is already on campus, that those rights don't go away. It doesn't just mean that your GSA exists and then you have no supporting um, laws or rights that exist to support you, right? For instance, like if another club is being allowed to poster during club week, you have to be allowed to poster during club week. So just like I said earlier, extracurricular clubs exist, a GSA must be able to be created. If that extracurricular club gets to do chalking, GSA must be able to do chalking. And if you feel like your GSA is being discriminated against, meaning not fair treatment, not given the same amount of resources as other clubs, um, then it's important that you address that by filing a complaint at your school, right? Um, and this can be something where you each member decides to file a, a complaint procedure form on discrimination and harassment, right? Because what often happens, I think, is these clubs members of the club come together and say, well, our GSA is being discriminated against. How do you complain about that? Well, the fact of the matter is, is if it's making you feel like you're being discriminated against, not only can you write a, you know, a complaint form as supporting your GSA organization, but also as you yourself, your own person, and saying, you know, like, I feel like as an LGBT youth, or you don't even have to say that, as a youth, a part of this organization, I am not given equal access to blah, 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 right? Uh, and also fill one out as an organization. That's, there's, that means how many you know, complaint forms coming into your school. Um, and so I think it's really, really important for GSA members to really start thinking about that. Are you given fair treatment um, as the other extracurricular clubs on your campus? One thing that happens a lot, and I'm seeing this come up, is that youth will say, well, they were given all these resources. We weren't given any. Well, it's also important to think about, did they pay for those resources? Did the key club pay for those resources and then you weren't able to pay for those resources? Well, that's different, right? Because that means the key club was able to organize around creating those funds and then to pay for those resources. If the school is giving things out for free, like access to the walls, access to poster paper, chalking, things like that, then you too are, you know, are um, required to get those things too. But I think some youth kind of mix up the idea of, their club being maybe really underfunded and then other clubs being really uh, having lots of money to spend on things but to think about that like is the school providing the same resources to you um, as all other clubs right take aside the money that that club was paying for something recognizing that maybe that's why they had I don't know that's why they have all the post paper that they have or something but GSA's you know to really think about in general on large campus activities things like that are you feeling like your organization is being discriminated against.